thinking about doing this series for quite a long time, but it's meant that whenever we've met, whenever we start to talk about electric cars, Robert's like, don't listen, yeah. you have to remain innocent. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so this really is my honest, innocent um, like, approach to doing this for the first time. So if there are any viewers who are new and are here because you're thinking about getting an electric car, then this is the series for you. Maddie goes electric, <laughs> enjoy. finally time to get rid of what we call the gas guzzler. But that was the past, this is the future and I am going electric. Hello everyone and welcome back to Maddie Goes Electric and what will be the final episode in this series. Uh, despite his very, very busy schedule, I was able to meet up with Robert because he wanted to ask me about the highs and the lows of this electric vehicle journey that I've been on and also get a little bit more information about some of the stuff that perhaps didn't make it into the series. Uh, if you haven't seen any of the other episodes, then please do go back and watch them because I have had such fun making this series. Uh, uh, but for now, hopefully Robert will be able to answer some of my last remaining EV questions. Back to the episode. So Maddie, Yes. the last time I saw you, I talked to you about getting an electric car for the first time and using it. Right. And then, and then I thought, when I was coming this morning, I thought, what do I know about what Maddie's been doing? And it literally is nothing. Good. I had no clue. I've been Great. so busy doing other things, I haven't got a clue what you've been up to. I'm, I've been really looking forward to this chat because right. I think when we've spoken about electric vehicles previously, I haven't really been able to participate in the conversation that right. much because I just haven't known that much about electric cars. Yeah. But I'm like, yes, right, okay, now we can talk <laughs> about it. I feel like I'm part of the team now. Yeah, yeah. I know, the one thing I do know is that you went to Milton Keynes yes. and, you, and did you have a go in a few then? Did you? So I kicked things off by doing a bit of online research and I got an idea of what was actually available, what right. was out there. And quite early on, I was, I guess, put at ease by the fact that there were cars that had a significant amount of range. Right, um, right. And yes. I didn't expect that. Really, oh, right, right. I knew that there were some cars like the Tesla that definitely had sort of like big ranges, yeah. but I didn't know right. that there were going to be other options available to me. So that yeah. was really, that was like instantly comforting. Right. Um, so that was good. And then once I had a rough idea of what I thought I wanted, that's when I went to Milton Keynes and I had to go at driving right. a couple. So I'm going to hop in, press some buttons and see how I get on. Power, that, that's a good start. Oh, whoa! This is remarkably easy to drive. That is so clever. Automatically, the car started to slow itself down. And that is something called regenerative braking or regen. It's got quite a bit of like, you know, get up and go about it. So that's fun. Like this is genuinely getting me excited about, you know, having a car like this. So that is great. I'd already driven the BMW, the BMW previously. Right. Um, and then so I tried both the Kona and the Kia as right. well, and I decided to go with the Kia e Nero. Right. Yeah. Which, Which I've fondly been calling Robert, by the way, but not after you, Robert <laughs> De Niro. Not, not, not you. <laughs> so, yeah. He deserves it. We got it. Robert. Well, they hired him, didn't they, to promote it. Have you seen the advert? Oh, no, they hired no, no, De Niro. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, no. Oh, Robert, you've it? got to see the advert. You'll find it online. I genuinely didn't even know that. Yeah, yeah. Robert okay, De Niro. This is the De Niro. I can't remember how they've used it because I'm so thick. I went, why is Robert De Niro promoting this guy? And then you go, oh, it's the near, oh. Well, anyway, Robert, yeah. um, we, I guess went with that one in the end, uh, mainly because of the range, but yeah. also I felt really comfortable driving it. Right. It had a lot of like smart tech inside. It's very inside. nice, the interior is lovely. It yeah. is really nice yeah. and I just, I just enjoy driving it, to be right. honest, and I, I haven't had like a bigger car before, right. so it's just quite nice to have something a bit bigger than the yeah. other things I've been driving around right. in the past. So you're at your new house then, Yes. could you charge that car there? Right, so... Because that when, was probably the first hurdle I imagine. Exactly, so I was choosing the car in, at the old house. Right, And oh, right, then okay. we moved, so we went to the, so we the moved house, right. and that's when Robert turned up, so right. that's when the car arrived, and we didn't have any charging. Right. And we had nowhere to charge it at home apart from through the kitchen window. Right. So my first experience of charging it was using the three pin plug. Right. And you know, actually sort of like going through the window, it was fine, it yeah. worked, but 
the most convenient time to be charging it would have been overnight, yeah. especially as it was essentially trickle charging. You don't really want to leave your window open in a exactly. new house you just moved into. It's exactly. not a good idea. Exactly. But then, so the, the actual, even in your circumstances there, an external waterproof three pin socket, which is not an expensive thing to have fitted, right. was, would have been a massive improvement because yeah. then you could leave it plugged in overnight. Yeah, something yeah. as simple as that would have solved it. Yeah. Um, but actually, in the end, we went down the route of getting a charge point at right. home. Um, we've got a driveway, so it's just a complete no brainer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but first, sort of like quickly, sort of just thought, you know what, this three pin charging isn't working, and let's go and see what I can find locally. Right and was really lucky to find a dead simple, very easy, it was, all, it was literally a plug point in the wall, but for the Type 2 cable right. instead, um, at a local pub, wow. and it was free. Wow. So I, it was the most joyous first yeah. sort of like charging away from home experience. I just, <laughs> I just drove up and I was like, oh, is that it? Yeah. Dunk, dunk, done. I was like, oh, I'll just go get some lunch then. And that's charging, you know, however, however even seven, if it wasn't, I think. so seven kilowatts is yeah. adding like 30 miles an hour rather than five. Yeah, it, so was, it does make a difference. Absolutely, yeah. it was absolutely fine. Yeah. This was so easy. So, what about rapid chargers? Did you get mm. to, did you get to use them? So, we were going to Yorkshire. Went on the old Zap map, worked out my route, and immediately was told that I didn't need to charge it. Right. And I thought, well, that says a lot immediately anyway. Yeah. The fact that I could get to Yorkshire without actually needing to charge. Yeah. I think, you know, for a lot of people who, again, are new to electric cars, yeah. just would assume that that wouldn't be something yeah. you could do. Granted, I'm an E-Nero, which is a really massive battery. Yeah. Um, but anyway, where we were going, a place called Otley, if I didn't want to get there, have an empty-ish low, tank, yeah. and then, for whatever reason, you know, yeah. not be able to make it back before finding yeah. a charger again. So we decided to stop off, sort of like, on the motorway, fairly near right. um, Otley. And we got there, but then we were incredibly confused because I'm, I, I don't, I'm very aware that I can charge the, the e-Nero super fast. Yeah. I know that. But I opened up the app to this new charge system um, and we were told what was available to us. And it said rapid charging and then showed me a picture of the type two connector. Right. So I thought, oh. Oh, you mean of just Type 2, not CCS? Yeah. Just Type 2. And I two. was like, well, well, I was like, I, I swear I need to add the other cable yeah. to get rapid charge. But this is saying rapid charging, and it's showing me just a picture just of the Type right. 2. So I was like, well, that's weird. We want to use AC rapid. Okay, so now we need to find the connector that matches it. That's this one. Uh, this one. But just for fun. Let's have a look, let's have a look. For fun, let's look at all the options. So, not us, us. The flower is what we want. In it goes. There we go. Initialization, charging. So we just put the type two in anyway, went and got something to eat, came back and had spent like eight P or something ridiculous yeah, and had slow. no charge at all. Yeah. But that and was there a CCS me. charger yeah. cable there? Right, there yeah. was one on the charger. So why the app was Told saying rapid yeah. charging? I knew this five years ago when it was really relevant. So that one of the cables will charge a Renault Zoe at 40 kilowatts. Which is and it's got a socket that is designed to take that. The original Renault Zoe only had one socket. It didn't have, C the new one has CCS. The old one only had that. So that will give it 40, right. or 40 which is way faster. And what you were getting is probably under seven. It's probably four kilowatts. I was, like, I, honestly, I was utterly confused. You know, all sort of psyched up. My first yeah, yeah. rapid charge. I'm doing rapid charging. come back, you know, from sort of like fast food at the service station. Like, oh. <laughs> and it added two and a half, and three miles. I was miles, like, was like ooh, this could be a problem. Yeah. Because now we've actually got to. Yeah, we've got to move into the hotel for a week. But also we had to get to, to, to Otley because we had to, yeah. to do a show. We were right. doing some live shows. Oh, and I thought, right, well, now we're really going to have to we yeah. have to use whatever's available to us there. Yeah. So that was an error. Our first one so was a bit of a fail. So you didn't plug in the CCS, no, you cause, just had to go? Because of time, we had right. to go. Um, but actually, as it happened, the day after, uh, Otley, in their local car park, the council had put in a free rapid charger. Wow, oh, brilliant. Um, wasn't okay. that easy to use. You had right. to have your whole... Everything had to be set up, yeah. but we ended up just calling customer services and right. they just took us through the entire thing yeah. and we were and able to get it. a rapid charge. Right. So it did work in the end and it was, it kind of, you know, felt a bit smug about it because it was free. Right. Your request has been processed. We're done. It's doing it. Okay. This combo is definitely a rapid charger, isn't it? 
It sounds like it's rapid. The machine's going for it. Woo! It's going to take off. It's like a TARDIS. Because the infrastructure is there. Yeah, yeah. We never had a problem with finding somewhere right, to charge right. it. That's it was interesting, because just... that's that's one thing I think people are scared of that. But what they... No. It's the, actually the next step. It was it's using just it. the yeah. faff. Yeah. The faff of having to sign up yet another account. Yeah. Authentication in progress. Charge card accepted. From January 2020 in the UK, there is government legislation that insists that all new rapid chargers, so yeah. not, not existing, all new ones, have to have touch to pay. And you drive in, mm -hmm. put, put your car in front of it, you press your card and it goes beep, you plug yeah. it in, it starts charging. It's not right. cheap, yeah. but it's really reliable and it's so easy and you don't yeah. have to get your card out in the mm -hmm. rain and find the right I, one. I mean, and... I mean, for me, that has been my biggest yeah. bugbear. But actually, we did get a charge point put in at home. Right. And since having that, because we're able to have it, you know, eligible for the OLEV grant as well, so it made it more affordable, we haven't really needed to no, charge I'm it outside of the house, to be honest, because yeah. we very rarely go further than 100 miles. Yeah. Very, very rarely. Yeah. And even though it was a bit annoying, I still would never go back. Right. I feel like I'm completely convinced. Right, that's okay. Because yeah. that was a, a thing I heard yesterday at another event, which was that mm. all the research and all the interviews mm. they've done with people, it, it's something like 97% of people who've bought an electric car yeah. will say categorically they will never go back to uh, internal no. combustion. I would just feel a bit dirty doing yeah. it. I think there's lots of reasons for that. And I think one of them is just just my overall belief system, yeah. <laughs> I suppose, yeah. is what I think is the better thing to yeah. do. Um, but I just prefer the car. Yeah. That's a big thing. Yeah. I mean, the car is a really nice car. Yeah. But I truly feel like driving an electric car, is, is, is it feels collaborative. Yes. Like it feel, I, I enjoy the feedback you get from the regen, and I, it just feels really comfortable to drive. Yeah. So I, for, that, for that reason alone, I wouldn't want to go back. Yeah. Um, and I do think that the structure will, the infrastructure will get better. Yes, yes, I know it is rapidly. Uh -huh. Got it. All those things that we're so used to, so mm -hmm. like servicing your car all the time, mm -hmm. having new bits put on it every couple of years because they worn out, yeah. those don't apply anymore. You don't mm. bother to do that. The running costs, how that's covered mm. by it when you're working, when you're freelance and you're charging for your travel, you know, yeah. those things are all, mm -hmm. suddenly it's all put into question again, whereas yeah. that's all been normal for years and right. no one's thought about it. You know, mm. Everyone has to have a new exhaust, a new fan belt, a new clutch, a new, and now you go, I don't. <laughs> No. None of those. No, the actual car itself has been car, great. Yeah. And actually, I think moving forward, I've been lucky to lease the Kia e Nero, right. but they aren't readily available. No. And actually, that was the car I wanted because it sort of like, it got rid of any of the anxieties. Yeah. That it instantly, it just dispelled them, which anything that comes would get, you know, becoming an EV driver for the first yeah. time. But having had one for a while, actually it is still a really expensive car to lease yes and i think we'll, we'll look at changing it right which is which hurts because i love the car so much yeah. but actually now i feel a little bit more settled we don't need a car with as much range yeah especially now we've got the charge point at home yes we, we could do with something a lot yeah. cheaper so i wouldn't want to put anybody off if they were to look at the lease cost of the, of the nero and go whoa yeah. that's expensive yeah. because i'm i'm hands up go yeah it is yes, i mean the renault zoe would be cheaper a lot there's a lot of cheaper cars that all have so much more range than yeah. they did five, ten yeah. years ago. I mean, you know, they, you know, because the new Renault Zoe, I just had a go in one yesterday to remind me how mm. I just love that car. <laughs> you know, 250 mile range right. in, a, in a Renault Zoe, which is like unimaginable. And that's it. I approached this assuming that I was going to have to. Um, you know, get really nerdy in a good way and yeah. try to really get to grips with kilowatts and all the various yeah. connectors. But actually what was quite refreshing was that as soon as I got the car and had looked into it, I quickly realised that if you want to, great, but you don't, you don't have, have to, to understand don't have everything. To. Yeah. And actually as long as you know what yeah. cable your car needs and you know roughly how long it's going to take yeah. to charge it up 
on, on you know, slow, fast or rapid. Yeah. That's all you have to know. But brilliant, Maddie. Thank you so much for doing it. No, thank it's you. Really, it's been really fun. good because it's that that it's that all those things that I've realised when we first talked to you about it was that I go up to a charger. I've been doing it for so long. Yeah. I'd have to do such. I'm being a rubbish actor. Mm. Rubbish acting. Going. <laughs> oh, I don't know how to use CC. You know, I just can't do it. It's not going. I just plug the damn thing in and then get angry yeah. with it when it doesn't work. But what is quite good to hear though is that the generally the experience mm. of. Yeah. Maddie in an electric car for the first time has yeah. been positive. Even that issue you had early on when you put the wrong cable in, yeah. 90%, all the new chargers, they, don't, they have two cables. Yeah. One of them won't fit your car, the other one will. And that is a wrap on Maddie Goes Electric. We would love to know your thoughts on this series and if you have any ideas for future episodes you'd like us to consider, then just leave them as a comment down below. If you've enjoyed these episodes, share them, subscribe to the channel, click that bell icon if you want to get notified whenever we upload new videos, all of that good stuff. Um, personally, I would just like to say a huge thank you to Fully Charged fans for recognizing why this type of content is important and for appreciating and sharing the series. I know lots of you are very informed about EVs already so um, your support I'm, I'm really really grateful for and from the full the whole team at Fully Charged a big thank you to our Patreons because without your support this show just wouldn't be possible. So I would like to end on that note and if you have been thanks for watching I'm sure I'll see you soon. Bye! And this is how that went. All the way to Leeds, a three hour journey without actually needing to charge up at all. So the charge flap. Okay. <laughs> I'll get the get my cable out then. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> this is what happens. Alright, talk to me about the charge flap. <laughs> 700 new ones added a month. No! Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm going to maybe have a ploughman's. Which is nowhere near as expensive as I thought it was going to be. Alright, we'll leave it on that then. <laughs> what? Oh, it stopped. Take a look at the events page on our website to find out about fully charged live events happening near you. www.fullycharged.show I made an absolute, I don't know what I can say on fully charged, mess of the first rabbit. I've used some bad yeah. language.